Okay, so Kirsten, Sam, and I. We got a, we got a critical mass. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Kirsten, are you ready to um, enter a dialogue with us? How are you doing? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, so here's, here's where we are. There, there's a lot going on, right, around writing partners. But what I would love to get feedback on is out of, um, you know, Hannah Franz's conversation with us now like three weeks ago and Carmen's conversation with us last week, um, I've built four, um, I'm calling them BL writing partners, right? Black language writing partners that um, I, somebody on writing partners could opt in for and or you could decide your class is going to opt in for and they would then they would see those writing partners and i'd love to get your feedback on them does that sound fair do you mind being put on the spot like that <laughs> um well okay <laughs> no i know how do you answer that question so this is set up by the way for to be like a jigsaw where you would go from the chair you're in down to see other examples but I'm going to focus in on the one example and I'll share my screen. And um, I, so Kirsten, you were at both sessions. What did you think about last week? Well, I'm getting set up here. Well, I, I came in really late on the last session, so I didn't I know you did. really yeah. get a chance to catch all of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I did get a chance to download the handout, but I didn't get a chance to look at it, but um, I, I thought that she provided useful information. I didn't know her background or, or anything, so I, I missed that part. Okay, cool, cool. So um, am I sharing screen right now? I am, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me show you that, and this is, a, you can get here too if you want, but I can just, I think you can just give feedback as we go. Um, on writing partners, you scroll down, you find out, you find more about groups. There are now 12 of them, but we're trying to keep the top of it simple. But once you get into it, and there's a skills group, all right? And skills, if I could just say, and this is fair enough preparation. Um, this comes from Carmen, right? This is how she defines skills, if you can see it. So, and as you can, I hope you can read that and listen and hear me babble this a little bit. Part of the, part of the reason we started looking at this is we, I mean, duh, but we started realizing that um, especially the chat GPT and the other models that are coming from commercial products with AI, that when they correct kids' language, they correct the voice out of the language. And we're trying to figure out how to keep voice and their own decisions based on rhetorical processes right, in, in their writing. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. um, and we can talk about that more. But And so um, Carmen now has been for decades now kind of looking at this, working with students around it, um, and trying to build on other people's work around the issues of what are the forms of Black English, what are the rhetorical processes, um, and her students kind of collect them, and they, it keeps going because, you know, they keep coming up with new ones, right? Fair enough. Um, slow me down or speed me up here as we go. Mm -hmm. So we've set this up, and... This is not going to play if because I have my earbuds on. Doesn't matter. So let me just let me just go here and say, go ahead. What? Okay. So there are four that I've created. One you would use when you're brainstorming or doing getting started. Another you would use for composing. There's an outlining tool, and then a going public tool. All right. Does any of that make sense yet? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to go to this one and notice that we do cite our sources where this information is coming from a little bit. Um, 
Which this one? one, one I'm sorry, I, I lost that. Yeah, no, yeah. This is the improv. Oh, there, there, one. Yeah, yeah. Brainstorming. Okay, so, so it, here, yeah, it's, it's kind ahead. of following a process as well. Is, is that was kind of the the flow? Yes. Exactly. Yes. I got it. Let me. Um, will I be able to find it? Oops. There's actually a good example. Sorry. Um, that I can go to right away to show this. Um. Ah, it's sorry. Let me let me look it up here. <laughs> uh, really lousy presentation presenter here. Uh, but let me. Okay, not Taylor's. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I know where to go now. I'm gonna. <laughs> sorry, I just need to check my notes there for a second. All right, so this is actually a student of Chris Sloan's. We're just going to use her first name. Hopefully you won't get to search for her. Yeah, we're just going to use her first name, but there it is all over the place. Maybe not. I, sorry, folks. We will get there. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> this is the right one. All right. This is down in table number two, if everyone wants to find it more easily. Um, but she wrote something called hot chocolate. All right. And I think, would somebody be willing to read this? One of the issues, Sam, would you do that for us? Yeah, I gotta, uh, I gotta put my glasses on. Yeah. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, is We know nothing about Sophia. We don't know if she's African-American, uses African-American speech or anything. Um, but what we have after you read it is, I've get, there's an improv teammate which is just, let's just call it the vanilla, more vanilla one. And then there is the BL improv teammate. So we can kind of compare and think about the differences. Is that All right, All right. I got my okay. glasses on now. So now how did you get to that so I can find it? I'm on the writing partners oh, page, but how do you get to that? It, so it's not public, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, but on, on Kumo space though, you can click on, if you go down to table number two, you can find it there. Do you want to do it that way? Sorry. Mm. Do you see it? No. I can, okay. Sorry, guys. Um, Here we go. One with the with the flag. Yeah, come down. No, no. Come down below the room. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Next, come to table two. Yeah. Yeah, now come to table two, Kirsten, over to your left. Nope. Yep. But you'll need to move a little bit to the left. Oh. Good. Now, you can all click on Sophia's first draft. All right? You see it there? And then you can make it bigger. It's easier to make it bigger. Oh, okay. I had to highlight it. It's, it's not opening, is it? What do you mean it doesn't open? Whoops, sorry. Here's yeah. Sorry. It when you Sam's on top of it. Sam, move up a little bit. Oh maybe. sorry. <laughs> oh right okay. there. You need access. Okay. No, you don't. Oh okay. I can I can see it now. <clears throat> Sam, are you do you have it open? Uh it's telling me I need access. That's why I'm over top of it because it's it's covering up. Um sorry about that. I'm curious why it need, you need access. It said that it popped up at first, but then uh then it popped up. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Like, You're uh, good? I don't know. It's opening. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I got it now. Thanks for your patience, guys. All right. So, would you mean? Would you mind reading what she wrote? Uh huh. Okay. I can't remember the first time I learned how to ski. My dad says that I've been skiing right as I started to walk. Even though I can't remember exactly what it felt like to first start skiing, I can still recall the moments when I stand when I would stand at the top of the run with tears in my eyes telling my dad I could not do it. I remember looking at him with the eyes of a seven-year-old girl wanting her dad to make the scary thing stop. Him and his calm demeanor simply looked at me and smiled and said, Sophie, would I ever do anything to hurt you? With those words and a promise of a hot chocolate at the bottom of the hill waiting for my arrival, I was off. I don't know if I could exactly call it that. I did the biggest pizza I knew, showing off my very bad stanky legs. Leg. I felt myself slowly move down the mountain with my dad behind me and the end nowhere in sight. I made a deal with myself. I didn't have to ski down the run, but every time I got on one side of the mountain, I would have to turn. Now, for my seven-year-old brain, the thought of just turning sounded a lot more manageable than skiing a whole mountain. So that's exactly what I did. Straight now, slowly turn. Straight now, slowly turn. Finally. I made it to the bottom of the hill and turned to my dad looking at me with a big smile on his face, which I did not reciprocate, but my anger and fear quickly disappeared. Yes, and part of the excitement of hot chocolate, but also because as I look back at this mountain that I was sure was going to be the death of me, I survived. Not only did I survive, but I did pretty well, actually. I learned from these few turns, taking, going down the run, is that fear is something that will always be present in our life. It's how we control emotions to not hold us back, but to focus on those few steps in front of us. Bam. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you reading. Some context. I think that she is a senior in high school. She, I think, is working with this story to turn it into a college admissions essay. Essay. I think all that. I'm not sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, but th th that's probably worth knowing. So I'm going to read the impress. So one thing she could do, and she, um, and to be honest, I did this for her to kind of use as an example and I'm enlarging so I can read is she can click on the, the whole document and get the improv teammate, which is designed to kind of give you quick, like one paragraph, two very short ones in this case response. And this is what the improv teammate does, right? It says your story, paints a vivid picture of, of a childhood memory, blending fear, determination, and triumph. The way you describe the moment with your dad at the top of, of the run is touching and relatable. Imagine if you added a bit more detail about the surroundings, the crispness of the snow, the chill of the air, or the way the sun glinted off the icy slopes. It could make the scene even more immersive. What do you think? And so, so first of all, what do you think of that response to a student? Yeah, I'm. I'm, general. I'm. I'm going to go back to like coming back to the sure. to the why thing again, Paul. Like because if mm -hmm. you know, based on the intentionality, which we're we're presupposing, but uh, if it was for a college essay, just let's say that was the why. Mm -hmm. She wants to tell a story of growth. She I think it's a face assumption. Yeah, go ahead. I know. Yeah, we wonder. Then she wants mm -hmm. it to be at the same time. She wants authenticity, but then she still wants a, a narrative structure. Then the you know the feedback should based on, should be based on the why. So, uh, uh huh. So 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 for preliminary. 
feedback that's fine but if the why is is deeper we need the feedback needs to go deeper mm -hmm. yeah kirsten you have any thoughts about that first well, yeah I, I yeah i would agree with that um because the feedback is, is pretty generic you know mm -hmm. make it more descriptive more detailed but yeah it doesn't really it's not going to necessarily um help this writer demonstrate how she overcame an obstacle or whatever the the why is for the essay yeah mm -hmm. to be oh. fair to be fair the improv teammate you could you could hit reply with ai and go back and forth really as long as you want to mm -hmm. so she could go deeper with that one but yeah what were you going to say sam no so helping helping the student to prompt the 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 improv to like hey this is what my intention is da 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 Mm -hmm. uh, that that's going to help get us closer. Um, yeah, I think that's just going to get us closer. Which, which, like you say, in ter in terms of like developing the rhetorical uh, process for for um, brainstorming and revising. Is is it is like leading leading with the um with the why piece, you know? Yeah. It's also true we can we can think whatever we want, but what works for the student is going to be what matters, right? Right. But, but that's yeah. Um. But but yeah. But just to, with that caution in mind. So I took so we could look at it quickly, but let me just describe that the um, um Terry Elliott months ago created the improv teammate and it very simply says use yes and pretend to be an improv actor just an, and then we added a bunch of stuff in that limits it says you know keep it to one paragraph don't say so much understand this is a dialogue that's ongoing so it gives us that quick response mm -hmm. and, right so that's that's what this one is i just took the that exact same one went and reproduce and remade it and added in um, some of the some of the um, stuff from Hannah Franz um, describing black English, black language and some of the stuff from Carmen's um, she has worksheets where she has this describes both the rhetorical processes and the, and the forms of black language right her, her word black language so with that stuff in there, what we tell it to do is be like the improv, but stop and look at these things that these scholars have said are important to look at. So have we created an improv teammate that respects black language in a way that the tone is right? Right? Is that fair? Mm -hmm. um, and Kirsten, would you mind reading this one? In response? Yes. The BLM. Okay. Um, your story. The, your, your story, right? Yep. That one? Yes, you got it. Yes. Okay. Your story has a genuine and heartwarming touch to it, capturing the essence of a childhood memory that is both vivid and instructive. The narrative brings out the fear, determination, and eventual triumph beautifully. I noticed some interesting elements in your writing. For example, the way you use phrases like, I did the biggest pizza I knew, showing off my very bad stanky leg, adds a playful and relatable tone to the story. This is a great way to connect with your audience and make the story feel more personal and authentic. Your story also has a clear narrative sequencing. The way you move from the initial fear to the final triumph is well-structured and engaging. This keeps the reader invested in your journey down the mountain. Considering your audience, it seems like you were writing for people who appreciate personal growth stories and might have had similar childhood experiences. Your language is accessible and your tone is conversational, which makes it easy for readers of all ages to connect with your story. Keep playing with your voice and ideas. Maybe think about how you can further emphasize the emotions and sensations you felt. For example, when you talk about the fear and the promise of hot chocolate, you could delve deeper into those feelings to make them even more vivid. 
This could help your readers feel more connected to your experience. Overall, your story is compelling and relatable, and with a few more tweaks, it can become even more powerful. Keep it up. All right. Again, we're just playing around here. Same same language, large language model, right? The difference is our prompt. In the second prompt, it has the stuff about black language form, um, forms and, and rhetorical processes, and it came up with this. Any thoughts so far? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. curious. I'm curious around, and I wasn't at this session or black language, mm -hmm. but the thing that I like, I have to uh, emphasize to my kids when they are using um, authentic language mixed with, yep. you know, academic language is like the importance of punctuation. And it made no mention of punctu punctuation. And punctuation could be, you know, a, a, anyway, it's a big factor. Like, mm -hmm. and the fact that it didn't mention punctuation to like enhance, uh, enhance the authenticity of the language, like emphasizing, um, you know, pl like, like playing with playing around with punctuation is as, as important as playing around with with the words, particularly when you're using authentic uh, voices. Mm -hmm. And and even yeah, even like not mentioning like, hey, you need to break some of this stuff up because is it will make the story <laughs> so, pop more. Yeah. And I, again, I don't know if these like even if it's just high level like. Oh, you, you did a gr great job with language, and I, I see you have everything really nice. The structure is there, but like, you know, separating da 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 could enhance the the experience for for the reader. I don't know. No, I, that's, that's helpful. That's good. yeah. So I'm on the live one now. Yeah, mm -hmm. you want to close what you had? Can you see the screen that I'm sharing? This yeah, point. I'm back on the screen. Uh huh. So let's stay with this one for a little bit, and I can show you the other ones. But Kirsten, did you want to say anything about this response? Um, I, I, yeah, I didn't really necessarily get the impression that it was because it picked out that one um, instance of stanky leg yeah. that it's somehow honoring black language. I mean, I to me, it you know it picked out that detail because it's an interesting detail. Uh -huh. I think, though, that, um, Sam, you brought up a, a excellent point about um, using authentic voice would require further prompting of the AI, um, because the first response is still going to be generic, in in my opinion. And I think that response was, you know, it was, it was an okay response, but I didn't get the impression that, oh, this is really honoring uh, you know, black English because the child said stanky leg or what have you. Um, I, I didn't get that impression at all. Like I said, it just seemed like an interesting description. But I think that if students um, who, because because black English is very intuitive, it's not something that can be academically taught. And I think that's mm -hmm. one of the challenges. You understand what I'm saying, Sam? It's not something that you, okay, yeah, do yeah. this and then do this. Say this way instead of that way, you know. So you're you're treating something that's intuitive, kind of academically, and that um, you know, could be a challenge in and of itself. But it would be interesting though to see how AI could be prompted um, through further questioning in terms of how um, you know students who don't speak standard English could add their authentic voice to the writing type of thing, and and you might get more of an a response that is more um, in alignment with the different discourses that students engage in. Hey, right. hey Kirsten, let, um, around your point that you made, like, like putting ourselves in the place where we sit, sit next, sitting beside a student, right? They compose something and it has some, some authentic, authenticity around their voice and their, um, and like you say, you can't teach it, but you want to, you want to elevate it. You want to bring it out. That's why I was going mm -hmm. with, with the importance of like punctuation plays a big part of this as well. Like, 
to lift up that voice and like emphasize, you know, um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying but, to, you know, punctuation is, is mechanics and a mechanic, um, understands how the system works, right? If I'm a, if I'm a mechanic, I don't just know how to fix the engine. I know how to fix, you know, the engine in relation to the whole system. So mm -hmm. it's understanding how the whole system of, in this case, you know, African American English works like in, and in what context would that best be used? Like, would that be in the context of dialogue, like in the story? Like if she had an actual, you know, exchange of dialogue with her dad, you know, yo pops, whatever, you know what I mean? Then that would make it more authentic and exclamation point and understanding that system instead of, well, add a dash or add, do a Langston Hughes and, you know, add all these different punctuation type things. That's what um, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. But you're saying it you're saying it way better than I did. Thanks. <laughs> I get it. But that's um, what you do when you sit beside a kid. You can help pull that out. And I don't know mm -hmm. that that's not easy for a machine to do. Right. Yeah, right. But that, that's right. Yeah. But granted, it's not easy for the machine to do. But it, but if we can get somewhere between what it would be like for you to yeah. be sitting next to the kid mm -hmm. and, and away from the, the, um, you know, killing your voice because it's mm -hmm. an AI machine doing this. Yeah. If we can get closer, that's our goal. <laughs> no, no. But, that makes sense. Can, can we yeah, shift to yeah. another example? Um, can you see my screen? Am mm -hmm. I sharing? Yes. Okay. So this, we won't read the whole thing. Um, you can look at it quickly here on the right side. What I'm going to do is just demonstrate how we do this. There are, I've been playing with this one for quite a bit. So there's a lot here, but, but let's do one live. I go to AI, I go here and I find my, um, my improv. I'm going to just do the be all improv teammate, right? I go, Hey, what do you think of my essay so far? Fair enough. Now, there have been a few people who have looked at what's on the left side and didn't recognize um, black language in it. I personally think I can see it there, but <laughs> let's see what the AI says, right? So it comes back and this is, again, there are four levels. We're still on the first one. I have the a couple of the other ones here. Um, and this is what it comes up with. Um, let's just... Start the conversation and find where that ended up. Here it is. Now it goes kind of deep, right? Maybe it's doing mm -hmm. too much, but here's what it does, right? Do, can you see it here? Mm -hmm. Enough with that? Okay. So I really appreciate the powerful and honest reflections of your essay. Your voice comes through strongly, right? Um, let's do look at a few key aspects. Um, it's doing some rhetorical work here. Your essay seems aimed at a broad audience, perhaps those who might not fully understand or appreciate the nuances of Black Lives Matter movement. You are clear and articulate in making your points accessible. Use personal experience here, call and response, right? You create a conversational tone, almost expecting a response from the reader, particularly in lines like, we all may seem equal on paper, but we are really as equal at, and united as we are we equal as united as we claim to be. This is this strongly invites the reader to engage with your perspective more deeply. Can we stop and how do you feel about AI giving that kind of response? Or not feel or think? What do you think about it? No, no, the call and response is, is definitely a rhetorical play and um yeah and and like black writing but also other good writing because you want people, you know, engaging right. with you. So it's it's that reciprocity. Uh but yeah, I I mean calling it call and response, I don't have a problem with it. So that issue of yeah, you know, like if you if you filter the AI through a black language lens, 
and it gives good writing instruction for anybody. <laughs> you know, what's mm -hmm. bad about that, right? Yeah, because at the end of the day, it just expands the um, uh, uh, the ability to accommodate um, different discourses outside of standardized English. Mm -hmm. and, and that's I think that's a good thing that, you know, in terms of AI being trained in the same way if someone wrote, you know, some dialect in Spanglish or something, um, then I, I think AI needs to accommodate that as well to not flag it as being wrong or bad. Because a student may not know that this is black African-American mm -hmm. English. They just know that, like you said, Sam, these are rhetorical moves that are not being flagged as negative, that, you know, don't use this, don't use call and response, use this instead. Um, so in, in expanding um, and accommodating and celebrating and acknowledging different ways that students communicate, I think is what's most important. Now, how do you, how do you feel about some of these other suggestions? And it doesn't always do this, by the way, this one did a lot more detail than I've seen it do before. But so for the, example- the piece, a lot, Cause the piece has a lot in it, so it has to respond a lot too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but notice the tonal semantics. It's you could possibly, and it's starting to make recommendations, right? You could possibly enhance your essay by playing with the sounds and rhythms of your sentences. This might involve repetition or alteration, alliteration, sorry, to draw emphasis and create a more dynamic reading experience. Well, first of all, that would have to be explained to most high school students, right? But, mm -hmm. but it, if in another part of the class you're talking about tone, tonal semantics, right, and it is part of uh, one of Carmen's things that she points out, maybe they would get that. But how do you, and it doesn't say you could use African American language or black language here. It kind of is, but <laughs> I don't know. It's not on the head, I think, in some ways, but what do you think about it? Should we look at the next one too? And then go ahead, I'll slow down. Yeah. Yeah, again, I, I think um that this is important in the context of expanding um understanding, AI understanding what is um good communication or valuable communication in the academic space. Because in the social media space, for example, um mm -hmm. lots of people use quote unquote, African-American English as they appropriate it. They mm -hmm. use all these phraseologies and say all these things and it's cool and acceptable um, for some more than others. But I think inviting it into the academic space. You know, I do think um, that students, like I teach at, a, um, at an HBCU and I think, you know, um, I let my students know or, you know, give lessons on them understanding what African-American English is and that it is a, a language, that it has linguistic properties, it's not slang, um, so that they understand what it is and what it means to help, as a way to help them expand and not um, compress their creativity in the writing space. Mm. Um, but these um, academic type terms um, <laughs> kind of, um, I, I mean, I think they're helpful. I don't know if a student would see that as, oh, great, you know, they're yeah. allowing me to use <laughs> my language. I mean, other than it's just, you know. It would, it would depend writing. on how the teacher follows up with it, probably. Right? Yes, yeah. right. Th exactly. Exactly. This, yeah. I, I actually like what it does with narrative sequencing, by the way, because it says the way you weave in stories about your father and personal observations adds layers to your essay. You might consider mm -hmm. expanding these narratives even more to provide deeper context and emotion, emotional re resonance. Mm -hmm. That feels like something that would be good for a reader to see. Yes. Yeah. And that, but you know, narrative, like, you know, this is what happens in the barber shop, but nobody's gonna know. Oh, you're doing narrative sequencing mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, they're not gonna understand that. But I, again, you know, they're gonna understand um, the importance of being able to tell that story 
and that that is not something that is, um, like I said, compressed in the academic space. I think that's good because students who naturally speak that way um, may want to write that way, but it's usually quelled. So I think AI accommodating that again is 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 great. Mm -hmm. Sam, anything you want to add? I want to. Yeah. Um... Sorry, yeah. So, no, no, no. I think it's part uh, to to Kirsten's point. Like mm -hmm. the AI feedback needs to modulate <laughs> the feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, if I'm sitting, even if I'm sitting next to a student and I taught them, if I taught them, say we talked about call and response and and we. Mm -hmm. we connected it with hip hop or whatever. I might have talked about yep, it before. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. But the way I'm going to sit the way I'm going to sit and give feedback I may not even say call and response. I I may mm -hmm. say it in a different kind of way but the kid is going to get it cuz Yeah, yeah. I might say like for example, you know how you go to church and the preacher says and mm -hmm. people talk back. I'm not going to say call and response, but you know how when the preacher gets you to say amen what can you do in your writing to make people make, make people yep. feel like they want to say amen, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. creating cool. the language that you would authentically also use with students to elicit this, uh, you know, this kind of rhetorical response. I think that's possible. Mm -hmm. We should explore that. Yes. Um, but yeah, that mm -hmm. makes sense. That's mm -hmm. that does. Yeah. Cause like yeah yeah I I wouldn't tell the kid oh let's let's do call and response I might like make a reference to that. you know what this reminds me of when I'm in church sometimes and like the pastor says something and people say amen do you think you could you could think you could you think you could do something to make that pop a little bit more you know and then the kid will go back and like or you acknowledge oh man I really liked how you made me like you made you made me feel like I was in church again I didn't say right. that, yeah uh, but. And more importantly, they un in that that example, really about, saying in that way, they understand the rhetorical impact. Because it's when about the pastor says, you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm excited because it's about the feeling that that you want them to have and you want mm -hmm. to elicit. So if the words yeah. don't generate that feeling, it's not going to do anything for the kid. But if you say, "Oh man, you made me feel like I went to church." Oh, mm -hmm. and if you want to take it to the next level, boom. So you don't even have to say call a response, right? Or, yeah. man, man, that was, man, um, man, you may, you may, uh, like, like with the exaggeration, like, I mean, mm -hmm. they get hyperbole and stuff, right? But like, yeah. wow, you really, you were really like feeling yourself from there. Like, how could you, you know, da, 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 da. and so. I mean that's something that you could, we we'll have to do a lot of crafting, I guess, to the AI to get to that point. But I think we would have to have kind of like feed that. We'd have to input that information into the AI in order for it to do it, because it's not going to. It's not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to do it, it on its own. Like so, it's going to have to like have a brain dump of me actually giving feedback like me giving feedback to our kids, like I'm sitting next to it. So here's the feedback that a teacher who understands uh, black mm -hmm. English or, you know, rhetorical devices used in black English, this is how a teacher would, would give feedback and, and then input that. And then it's going to make it more uh, useful, particularly because if you need to make it elicit the feelings. If it's not a listen to the feelings, it's not going to work. Yeah, and I I I, I get the um, the academic phrasing of <laughs> these terms, you know, narrative sequencing versus you know when the old guy in the barbershop always got a story for everything <laughs> to prove his point, you know, type of thing. We, we don't have um, to choose. It, it, really? in, in some yeah. ways, it gives it. Um, and for students, especially like in a college level, mm -hmm. you know, having that academic phrasing almost gives their language weight, right? That it, it's not, you know, just kind of slanguish 
poetry type of thing, but it actually, oh, narrative sequencing. What that, you know, what that means is, um, you know, tell, throw a story in there. Don't just use, you know, the evidence directly from the source, but you know how the old man in the barbershop, you know, always be telling the story, or like you said, how the pastor, he gives a call and response as, rhetorically because it gets the people hyped up. It gets folks excited. It validates. So I think it's a, a it's a way um, for them to even better understand how um, their language is a viable part um, of the academic space for everybody. Like you said, not just um, you know African American students or students that speak um, you know have these linguistic properties. Um, you know, like braggadocious even, um, they understand, they may not know that word, but they understand that, you know, if you explain it in a way that, um, you know, you just kind of feel in yourself or you, you know, uh, leveling up or what have you, they, they understand that. So, um, and then so I think I'm, it allows for more, um, accommodating to different ways of explaining this to students. So I don't know if this would work, but it could be that like the quote unquote um, improv one does more like what you were saying, Sam. Sounds more like my teacher sitting next to me, but mm -hmm. but I, I don't know if it could be the third time through or something, but at some point make pulling the academic stuff in might be useful. On the other hand, there could be different writing partners. There could be one like, Hey, if you want to see what this looks like from a black language academic point of view, click on use this writing partner, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make some sense? Um, just want to show you to get more a little more feedback on there. This this one is uh, what can I do? So the student asked, or we're imagining the student asked, what do I need to do and improve, right? And it does some of the same stuff here. And so I don't want to kind of just have you all, both of you repeating over and over, but let's look at this for a second. Um, yeah, let's look at this paragraph here. When you mention, and then quote, even though I don't want to believe that I'm given a certain privilege due to my, due the light, to, to the light pigmentation in my skin, it's something that happens every, happens a lot every day. You are using conversational style that resonates with well with your audience. The directness and the personal storytelling are, th are strengths in black language. How do you think your use of personal anecdotes impacts the reader's connection to your message? Responses to that, or is it so, sort of similar to what you've already been saying? Now, how is that example of African American English? <laughs> um, what is it saying? It is. That's always a question, right? <laughs> but fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. The conversational tone, and I, yeah, let's see. Mm. Well, partly conversational tone, because like in conversational tone, again, unless you're going to use some special pu punctuation. Light pigmentation mm -hmm. is not normal mm -hmm. conversational right, right. unless you're being funny. And then if you're right. being funny, I need to put it in quotes or something to make it stand out. Otherwise, yeah. I'm not getting that you're being right. um that you're being a smart ass. I don't, and I don't know if you are trying to be a smart ass or you're being mm -hmm. right, because light pigmentation sounds almost hoity toity, like right, you know. Right. Yeah, and if that's but I can see uh, you said it in quotes like light pigmentation, aka, you know. Yeah. You see, <laughs> so yeah. they have to fix. Like, if you're really trying to say this is black English, like, yo, you are. If, are you trying to? Like, what are you? What are your? What's your why again? What are you trying to do? Like, mm -hmm. you know, right? But we just to say we we have asked it, and this comes right out of. Um, Hannah Franz's thoughts about how to respond um, to, to like ask questions, say, hey, 
do you think your message is connecting to whoever you your audience is right so mm -hmm. it does do that um but i heard what you said there about that um notice mm -hmm. that these these continue like this is all you got at first these first two paragraphs and then you say yeah i need more suggestions and it kind of goes deeper each time um Can I switch to something else? Uh, let me show you this. Uh, Sam, uh, Kirsten, you're welcome to jump in here as well. But Sam might be closer to doing this. You, when If you go to make a writing partner, which is right at the top here, right? And you come down, you won't... Oh, who am I right now? I'm a student. Sorry. Ah. So... Sam, I wanted to show you and anybody else who's interested, um, and I need to log out and log in again to do this. Sorry. I'll just take a minute. I want to show you how you could actually go in and help us improve the writing partner. Mm -hmm. So it just becomes a, a more of a us thing instead of me sitting here trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of suggestion was you could you could do a, a writing partner party kind of thing and we can do it together like as a as a session kind of thing. Good idea. But I want to show you at least how to start that, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I come here, I find the um I need to know which one it is. It is we're 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 playing with the BL and pro improv teammate. I come here and you don't get edit because you didn't make this, but you get duplicate, it comes up here, and then you can go in and see what I've done, right, mm -hmm. so far. And you can, and and let's do it. Um, a teacher sitting next to me, next to a student. We're gonna come up with a better title later. <laughs> but we'll we'll call it that now. So everything that was that I put in here, all of the text and so forth from from Hannah and from Carmen is in here. Um, I would suggest that you leave it for now, right? And that you um, that you create this. All right. So this comes up over here in an edit screen. You then have this over here, and you can say, all right, let me go in and say, how did you say that, Sam? You said something like, talk like a, <laughs> talk like you, you are a, the guy on the side. Or the the guy on the side or? Okay. How else would you say it? Speak informally. Um, a guy on the side uh, who all right. Let's um. I just want for purpose of of uh, showing you this. I'm yeah. going to choose brainstorming. Um, just so you know, this doesn't get shared with anybody but you at first. But when mm -hmm. you hit update here, right, you can come over here and um, where is some text? I have to go again. So has Bonnie been playing with this yet? Yes, but you know, to some yes, mm -hmm. and and we're hoping her we're hoping the students start what they think is an appropriate response also. Um, so there's that about, um, let me just, sorry, cl clicked on the wrong thing. I'm just getting some text here. Um, so I'm just going to say this is something to believe in essay. But yes, we need to where we spend more time doing this, but Give me one more minute. Was it, where was it? Here it is. Okay. So I go here and I say, um, I'm going to reply with AI and I'm going to say, here's the text that I'm putting in. 
Um, and now I'm going to continue. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a response, but with your sentence that, right? See what changes it does. That's right. Now, if it doesn't change enough, here's the text. Exactly. So, um, and just to know the way this works is that if you end up and early users kind of said to us, hey, I need to be able to go back three and, and find the one I did before. So you can you can browse previous versions and you know go back to the other version. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't lose it. So thoughts more generally here. I'm gonna stop sharing and is this a like let's get to the big issues here at the end. Is is this a project worth doing? Are we in the right direction? Thinking we need to do better. <laughs> no, like actually having a model of, like, like me saying a god on the side doesn't give it like what really the interplay, right? And so like, we would have to feed it the actual interplay of me guiding on the side. And here, here's examples. Like, for example, yep, yep, yep. Oh, when you use call and response. When, when someone uses call and response, you can, you can, you can, uh, uh, you know, talk about how how it makes you feel like uh, you're in church. You know, so that's where we'd have to get like. So, so you know what, Sam? We could actually get transcripts of of teacher conversation with students. Yeah. and put it in, mm -hmm. and or you could make it right. You could. You could pretend to be that. I mean, you could write a that dialogue. Would, that, would, that would help. This it is take what it, it would sound like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that would help take it to the next level. That's cool. Kirsten, you jumped in. Thank you for coming by, <laughs> and we put you in the oh, spotlight. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank any you. any fi any no final problem. thoughts on what we're doing here and your how you're thinking about this? Where 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 are you well, teaching? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's I um I'm in Virginia um so I um, teach I adjunct at ODU Old oh, Dominion University oh, okay. State University yes I thought you said you were at an HBCU oh I was missing here I am I'm Norfolk not. State you're at Norfolk State as well yes yeah oh, okay cool 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 and he still yeah, finds I'm time to, to join us here. what can I tell you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, no. great suggestions. I hope we're I hope we're making progress here. You know, we're trying to take mm -hmm. on that uh, that uh, the large language models and trying to make it work for kids, right? So just to say, yes, cool. We appreciate it. Cool, cool, cool. All right, All right. thank you both, and we'll okay. see you soon. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. Bye. -bye. Good night. All right. Cheers. Mm -hmm.